hi everyone. So, oh, it was a wonderful night. I got to sleep the whole night. Well, I did get woken up once, um, but other than that, it was peaceful. And I was gonna get up early. I I was not gonna get up as early as I do when I go to work, but I was gonna get up at eight. And I had the alarm set. And it was six o'clock when I woke up. Because once my body gets used to a certain time, it automatically wakes up at that time. I don't even have to try anymore. And so this morning God said, go back to sleep. You don't need to be up right now. You need to rest. I was like, thank you. So I had to go to the bathroom, um, set out a clean pee pee pad for my pup, and I went back to bed. I was like, thank you, God. I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> and so um, I'm just like, okay. And I heard the alarm clock at 8 o'clock. I didn't un take it off or anything like that. So I heard it. And God said, turn it off and go back to sleep. Okay. Okay, so, oh, so, 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 God had me take a picture last night of two Cowboys and, uh, players. One player was Staubach, okay, and the other player was Dorset. Eyes to see, ears to hear, and I love it. It makes me giggle like a little kid when he goes, hmm, let's do it Tara's way or Tara's math. And I was like, ooh, what are we going to do? What are we going <laughs> to Just, I'm a dork like that, okay? We all are. Anyway, so God goes, Staubach, what if you turn the, L, the U upside down? And I was like, stand back. And then he goes, hmm, door set, the door set. Stand back, the door is set to open. Okay. This, and the reason I'm saying this right now is I didn't understand why he wanted me to share my dream. Because my dream, to me, had nothing to do with anybody else because it's all people in my life. It's all people that I've have treated me poorly. It's all people who are going to get God's judgment because he already told me that's one of the reasons. I'm not allowed to talk to them because he doesn't want me near them when it begins to happen. And this is how God showed me it's going to begin. Not just for my kids, not just for the people who I was raised with, but for the entire world, it's going to begin the same way. So when the door opens for us, and our blessings begin to come through. Part of my blessings are going to be my three children coming back. And they're going to be unrecognizable. They're going to look like they did, they should have looked like when they were being raised by me. So, it was me, my sister, her family, my brother, Sergio, the one who looks exactly like my Uncle Richard, his family, my brother Caesar, and his family. There's three of them. Eyes to see, ears to hear. And my kids are three. And I remember when I was at, when I when my children were growing up. And they were starting to act out. I would tell the woman who raised me, why did I get Sergio's kids? Why did I get Chela's kids? Why are my kids behaving like your, like them? I said, this is Sergio. This is Chela. 
why are they acting like them? And she was like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but she always had a little smirk on her face. And I was angry because I knew, somehow I knew that my kids were switched somehow, not their bodies, not their bodies, but somehow they'd suck them out of their, who they truly should be and replaced it with the dirty, filthy people that are her kids because her kids were thieves. Her kids were liars. Her kids were jealous and envious. I was none of those things. And I wasn't raising my kids that way. And I prayed over my kids and they believed in God. That's the difference. It wasn't because of anything I did. It was because they believed in God. Because I showed them God. And they went through so many trials and tribulations in their lives because of these people. And I hadn't gotten the revelation of this dream until as I'm speaking it, God is giving it to me. And so we were at this resort and I didn't see the woman who raised me. I didn't see her, but I knew she was there. It was like she was hiding somewhere in the distance and I couldn't. I could feel her presence, but I couldn't see her. Because remember, in my dreams, in my head, she had made herself God. She was coming through as if she was God. That's why I didn't see the things she was doing to me. Because she had taken my belief, my faith, and used it against me. And it was God who said, let me peel back the onion of all the crap that they've been putting in your head. He showed me the labyrinth and I remember, I'm like, I remember seeing this labyrinth when I was a kid. He goes, yes, she used to make you run it in your head. And you used to think it was fun because I always played puzzles with you until you got lost in the, in the maze. And he showed me this because he showed me the movie Labyrinth. And the movie Labyrinth looked like my head. I was like, that looks so familiar. And then he showed me this woman talking to me in the light. And at the very end, the very last encounter I had with her, I told her, you're not God. You're Linda. Stop talking to me. I'm not listening. And that was the day I took my three kids and we walked out the door. And my three kids left them. They walked out the door. God revealed to me that my son, my oldest son, was looking for me. He was in California when he got arrested. He was looking for me. He wanted to find me because he didn't want to be in the world anymore. He didn't want to be alone anymore because he saw what they were doing. He saw that nobody loved him but me. But it wasn't me who loved him, it was God. God was showing him the truth. God was revealing to him where he belonged. Ah, okay. And he's revealed to each of my kids where they belong, who they belong with, and where they should be. So, we were in a beautiful resort. I mean, this resort was like only the elite the creme of the crop go to this resort. How they ended up in this resort, I have no idea, but they did and I was there. But I was watching them. I wasn't participating in what they were doing. I was just paying attention. And I remember thinking, this doesn't look very pretty. To the natural eyes, it was beautiful. The, it was lavish. It was green. And, but to the spiritual eyes, it was run down. It was 
abused. It was, the plants were all sagging. They were sad. They were, everything has a spirit. Everything has a life. And these things were all dead. They were all dead inside. And the people that were there were all dead. And so suddenly I started to feel this. And I was like, Ah, uh, there's an earthquake coming. So I ran. I ran to my room. I ran away from the location I was in because in that location I knew the earth was going to split. And so I ran. I ran to the room. I ran to the room. And I ran to the room. And I don't know why I was running and running and running. I should have gotten to the room right away, but I had, I just, it was like I was running but I wasn't going anywhere. Spiritualize. Spiritualize people. Discern what I'm saying. Discern how God is revealing to you the words that I'm saying. Oh. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I finally get to the room. And I look around and the room was beautiful to the eye. But to me, it looked like a prison. It did. It looked like a prison. And I was just like, I ain't staying here. And I was about to walk through the door when I heard Diana. I turned around and I said, what? And she goes, don't go through the door. Don't go through the door. And I'm like, why not? There's, there's two people and they have three panthers. And I'm like, so? They're going to eat you if you go through that door. And I said, I'm going through the door. I'm leaving. I'm not staying here. She goes, please don't leave us. Please don't leave us alone because it's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt us if you leave us. And I turned around and I said, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be with you. And then all of a sudden, the kids ran in. Her kids and Sergio's kids. Caesar has a daughter too. But the mom believes in God. He is an atheist. He has declared himself an enemy of God. And that was why him and I could never get along. Because I never heard him say that before. Until one day I was at his house. And he turns around and he looks at me and he goes, you know what? God is a bunch of and anyone who believes in him is a fucking idiot. They deserve to die. And I just looked at him. I grabbed my things and I walked out and I never walked back. Because until that moment, I didn't have a reason to be there. I, I felt like I was family. I felt like a duty to my family because they're my kin. But after he made that comment, I responded, of course. I did tell him a few things about his life and about himself. I told them, you're the walking dead. And one day, when this earth opens up and swallows your stupid ass, and you're praying to God, and he's looking at you, watching you go into the hole, Then you're going to see the God I serve. And I grabbed my things and I walked out. And I never went back. Not to him, not to his mother, and not to his brothers, and not to his sister. I cut all ties with that family that day. And she's called me from that day. She would come to my house. She would have to drive to where I was. Because I wouldn't go there anymore. I'd go see my nieces, I'd go see, because they didn't live in the same places as these other people. But I never went back to her house. I never went back to my sister's house. I never went back to my brother's house. After that day, because I knew, I knew at that point that they never believed in God because those were the exact same words she used to tell me when I was a child. And there is nothing that will make me 
speak out of line, speak out of, than someone saying that they hate God. And I ask God, I am so sorry, but I've got to say something about this because I cannot let this go. They will not say these words in front of me, Father. That is why yesterday, or two days ago, when Cassie was about to open her mouth, she goes, are you guys religious? That was the opening line. And I said, Father, watch her, watch her words. Because if she says something that does not, that does not sound right to me, and it is blaspheming you, I am going to open my mouth. Because I love him that much that I will defend him, even if it costs me. Even if he punishes me for it later. I am willing to receive the punishment because I am not allowed, I am not about to allow someone to speak against God. Especially someone that I know isn't walking with God who hasn't seen his beauty, who hasn't seen his love. I defend those that I love, and I love my father. I love him with every part of my body, every part of my being. And I will not allow anyone to speak ill of him. But, That is why I asked God first to have them watch their mouths. I did not expect him to say this. That is why I didn't ask God to watch his mouth. I know better now. I give God the opportunity to say, mm. <laughs> no, you're not going to say this. You're going to give what you want. You're going to say your piece, but you're not going to put it in the context that my daughter is going to react in a way that I'm going to have to punish her for because she's judging you based on your words. Even if I'm right, even if I'm right, I'm feeling righteous, I'm feeling prideful because I am reacting in a way that is not godly. And I know that there is punishment for that behavior because the punishment is against the sin. The sin is pride. Pride is arrogance. But asking God to have the person watch their mouths, asking God to watch the person watch their words that come out of their mouths. Now I can react in a godly way with love and understanding and explaining. She had a question. She was curious. Had she said things that made God out to be something different? Yeah, I would have said something. And he would have had to punish me. Because judge, if you will be judged according to the way you judge. And when she asked the question, I didn't feel anger. I didn't feel hatred. I wanted, I wanted to explain. I'm like, well, religion. We have one religion, two religions, three religions, four religions. And everybody wants to get it about. They want their own thing, but they want to be similar to everyone else. That's the thing. They want to do their own thing. But they want to keep it close to the real thing so that people don't question them about their true faith. Because then, you know, then, 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 then. But anyway, it just, it, when she said what she said, I was happy to explain to her why we have so many different dates. And she goes, oh, hmm, I guess I never thought of it like that. Everybody has their own idea of when the dates are. Mm -hmm. The real dates, the Hebrew calendar tells us, but everybody wants their own take on our Lord's resurrection. You know what's really cool? I wanted a cup like this, and I couldn't find one. I, I told God, I said, I want a masonry jar looking cup for my coffee, because I think they look really cool. And I was looking for them everywhere. And he sent me to Winco. 
And I was like, Father, they don't, they don't have cups. And he goes, just go look. And I did. This was the only cup they had left. They didn't have two. I wish they had two, because then I'd have a pair. But, yeah. But I love the cup. It's just, it's beautiful. And it kind of reminds me of Jesus, the carpenter, you know? And it, it almost, look, it, I, I want to say it's made out of clay, because um, it has that feel to it, the clay feel. And so I love things that are earthy. But back to my dream. I know, I get distracted. God pulls my head like everywhere, and I'm like, I, I, follow, the, I follow the carrot. Wherever he leads me, that's where I go. <laughs> it's just, anyway, so she's asking me not to walk through the door. She's telling me not to walk through the door, and she's using fear to keep me there. But I'm not afraid. I wasn't even afraid when I finally saw the, the panthers that came through the door, and they look more like jaguars, but, but they were panthers. And eyes to see and ears to hear, okay? And I turned around and I looked at her and I said, I'm not afraid. I'm gonna walk through that door and I'm gonna leave because I don't wanna be here. And suddenly her kids and Sergio's kids ran around the corner and one of them's holding their butt like they're about to poop. And the other one's holding their mouth like they're about to throw up. And the other one is running around and he's like, ah, because he's got throw up everywhere and he, he already threw up and he already pooped, like diarrhea, everything. And she started crying. And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, the kids are sick. The kids are sick. I don't understand why the kids are sick. Why are the kids sick? Why are the kids going through this? And then I remembered, I remember in the Bible, when Jesus was grabbed the, the mud and put it on that man's eyes. And he said, and they asked, teacher, why is he blind? Is it something that his parents did? Is it the sin of his parents? And he said, no. He was put here for such a time as this so that I could heal him and you would witness it. These children are going to be punished. Be God is going to use their children to punish them for their sin, for taking my children's lives and doing what they did with them for doing what they did to my life. You see, God moves. God doesn't move when it's one person. But when they do it to multiple children, when they do it to everyone that they encounter, now it's like a beacon for God that this punishment cannot go on, cannot wait any longer. It must come. But he has a time for that punishment to arrive because he's giving them time. He's giving them opportunities by sending him this child, by sending them that child, by giving them words, by giving them opportunity to repent, to drop to their knees, to say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. But when they keep going, when they keep doing these things, not just to one child, but another child and another child. And they feel like, I'm on top of the world. I'm the Lord of the banner. I'm the king because nobody else can do anything to me. Ha, there's no God. If there was a God, he would have already zapped me. Well, they're going to get zapped, all right. But it isn't them who are going to pay the price. It is going to be their children because they chose my children and they've chosen, they've chosen other children. And it wasn't when these people were adults that they chose them. They chose them when they were young and innocent. And God said, woe is to those who hurt the children for their innocence. It is best you throw, you put a rope around your neck and you throw yourself into the, into the river 
because the punishment that's coming to you will be worse than anything else anyone else would suffer for any type of sin. And that is what they've been doing. They've been looking for children, for the children of God, not the adults, not the mature people, not the ones who can protect themselves, not the ones who can defend themselves. They look for the innocent, for the naive. They look for them in 16-year-olds, in 17-year-olds. They look through their children's friends, if you don't understand what I'm saying. They've been using their children to bring them new blood, fresh blood, new meat. And now their children are having children. That's right. They're going younger. Because the woman who raised me saw the beauty of the blessings that God was giving me. And she wishes she could have gone back and done it from the time I was born, from the time I was a young child. Because then she would have had all that time and they would have had all those riches. And they would have kept me in a locked room. Because her hindsight 2020 isn't Oh my God, I treated this child poorly. I treated this child with disdain. And she's a child of God. No, she was like, oh, I should have done it earlier. I should have done it younger. Why didn't I see? Oh, I wish I could tell myself to, tr to put her in a freaking hole so that she could never see the light of day. But now she knows better. So now she's teaching her children to do the same thing. And her sons aren't the ones that are doing it. It's her daughter-in-law. But not Caesar's wife. Caesar's wife won't come near her. Caesar's wife won't be in the same vicinity as her. She can't stand her. She's not welcome in her house. She's tried. Trust me. I remember the complaints. Eh, Caesar won't come at me in. Caesar, but Caesar told me that one night when I came home to his house and it was dark and it was late, that if I ever do that again, he's going to shoot me. He, he met me at the door with a gun. Okay. Well, there you go. Those are the children you raised. And she goes, you're not going to say anything to him? I'm not his mother. You are. Yeah, but he listens to you. I'm like, no, he doesn't. He never did. They're your children, not mine. Mine listen to me. Mine obey me. And when they step out of line, I spank them. I put the rod to their butts because that is what God said. It is better to cut your arm off than to allow sin to happen. It is better to take out your eye than to allow yourself to see sin fully. And I was teaching my kids because they were starting to show signs of being sinful and I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't have sinful children. My daughter was lying all the time. She couldn't tell the truth to help herself. And I remember who the liar was. I'm like, that's Chela. Why, why is she lying like this? Like, she wasn't a liar when she was little. She was so honest. She would tell me everything, everything, everything that her grandmother did, everything that her grandfather did on her dad's side. Grandmother was a stepmother, but, you know, step-grandmother. That was the only grandmother she ever knew. She even told me the stuff that her great-grandmother did. She's like, Mommy, can you not send me with, with great-grandma Bernice? And I'm like, why not? She goes, the other day she took a turn and we almost got hit by a car. I'm like, she shouldn't be driving. And I'm like, um, no, because my ex-husband would tell me, let my, grandma, my, let my grandma drive the kids to school so you don't have to do it. And it was one and done. And my, so my daughter came up. She's like, Mommy, don't, don't let us go with her. I'm like, okay. I never let her take them again. And she would come and she would tell me things. And suddenly she's lying to me. My oldest son never lied to me always told me the truth even if, even if 
He didn't want to. He always told me the truth. Until one day he didn't. And then he's hanging out with people that, because he would tell me, Mom, when he was little, Mom, I don't want to hang out with that guy. I was like, why not? He does this, 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 and this. I'm like, oh, yeah, stay away from him. He's not a good boy. And you're a good boy. And he goes, okay, thanks, Mom. And then he would tell me, Mom, I don't want to go to that person's house. And I'm like, why not? Because they do this, this, and this, and this. I'm like, okay, then you're not going to that person's house. My youngest was the only one she didn't have hands on because I raised him from the time he was born. I actually got the opportunity to stay home for three years to take care of him. I don't, like, I don't even know how it happened, but it did. My ex-husband was like, you know what, you should stay home, take care of the kids. And I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, well, stay home, take care of the kids. So I did, I quit. I stayed home, take care of the kids. And that was the best three years of my life. Because I, I got to guide my kids. I got to express to my kids about God and the love of God. You know, that's when I found the movie, The Prince of Egypt, and we would sit down. That was our favorite movie, to sit down on a Friday night, having pizza and popcorn and just watching it. And then my kids would ask questions about why God would do that. And I would try to explain why God would allow his people to suffer and then deliver them from the evil that they were being oppressed by. And I said, because sometimes people don't believe and they have to go through things in order to be able to see, to see the blessings of God, to see the beauty of God. And when they go through these things and they get delivered from these things, they only can say it was God because no one else has the power to get them out of hell. And my kids would tell me, I don't ever want to go to hell, Mama. I don't ever want to be that, that person. And so I'm standing there and she's begging me not to leave. And I said, well, you need to get something to clean those kids because they're, they're, they're throwing up and they're having diarrhea and you can't have them. And so she went and she found these white claws. And I looked at her and I said, where did you get those? And she goes, from the man, he gave them to me. I didn't touch them. I pulled my hands away. And she goes, why won't you touch them? I said, because they're not for me. What are these? What, what, what? She goes, well, I have to do something. And I'm like, go ahead. The white claws weren't white claws. 